Deputy Marshall. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Bruner, I'll start with you. Bristol Myers um, makes this new miracle drug, Eloquist, relatively a miracle drug. You know, when I was in residency treating patients, I was using Coumadin, heparin, and then Coumadin. It might take three or four days to get someone heparinized, and then we switch them over to Coumadin. They might be in the hospital for 10 or 14 days. So in its own right, Eloquist you know, saves money. It saves that length in the hospital and prevents hospitalizations as well. So I want to point that out. And as we think, talk about rationing care, we've discussed how we're rationing care in foreign countries. But I want you to speak about rationing care in this country. How do PBMs ration care when they take a drug like Eliquis and don't allow it on their formulary? Does that ever happen? Senator, I'm glad you raised that point. Um, we have had absolutely that case happen on multiple drugs. We've had it happen on Eliquis. We've had it happen where when we have not been able to reach an agreement with an intermediary on a rebate that they've taken Eliquis off a of formulary. And when that happens, those patients no longer have access to Eliquis and they have to go on to another branded or in, in many cases, they may go on to Warfarin, as you say. Yeah. Uh, Eliquis is the number one product in the oral anticoagulant space. Okay. And so I'm gonna, sorry to catch you. So, so they have to go back to Warfarin, the Coumadin, the drug that I was using in medical school in the, in the 1980s, uh, a, a drug with significant complications, uh, it, it hassle factor, the patient has to go get blood testing done, you know, maybe twice a week as, as well. But with your drug, you know, the miracle, one of the miracle parts of it is, A, they don't bleed into their brains anymore, and, and two, they don't have to go get their blood testing done once a week as, as well. So, you know, it's a huge amount of innovation and it's just, it amazes me how much power these PBMs have obtained. Let's go to Mr. Davis next. I want to talk about delinking. And you have, a, at the time, a pretty a miracle drug of your own to treat diabetes with. Uh, there's a list price. How much of that, what percentage of that list price does typically uh, Merck get at the end of the day? So, Senator, if you look at uh, Genuvia, which is the drug you were speaking to, uh, the list price is, is $6,900 per year for, per, year. per year uh, for, for Merck. We recognize $690 on that drug per year. So of the list price, you're only getting 10%. It's a 90% discount. 90% discount. Where does the rest of that money go? Uh, into, the, into the middlemen, into the system as a whole. If, if, if we had the time and the energy and a chalkboard, would you be able to ex explain to me and show me all the little places that goes? I could, but I, 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 th I think you appreciate it is highly Very complex and so complex that at times uh, even learned people who play in the space can't yeah. understand. Well, certainly I can't explain it, and, and that's my point, is it's yes. so non-transparent. We don't know where this money is going, but certainly um, we know that the pharmacy benefit managers are taking 50 to 75 cents of, of that dollar, and you're only getting 10% of it. It, it. I would like to know where the rest of it goes. Then I'll go back to Mr. Werner. Similarly, uh, with, with your drug, with Eliquis, what type of, what percent of that list price do you think that you all are taking home? Senator, it's a, it's a relatively smaller percentage. As I mentioned before, we've paid over the last five years about $100 billion in rebates and discounts, and the majority of that go to one product, and that's Eloquus. Okay. Um, go back to Mr. Davis. Let's talk about, you, you all have an antiviral drug that's been, a, been approved. Um, how many drugs did you, did, did you go down? As, when COVID hit, you were trying to develop multiple drugs. How many have made it across the finish line? What did you spend on R&D as you look at those all together? Yeah, so we, when, uh, when the COVID situation hit, we uh, drove two uh, or four key programs, two in vaccines, uh, two in antivirals. Um, only one of those succeeded, which is the drug Legevrio. Uh, the s total spend across uh, those four programs is a little over $2.5 billion. So you spent $2.5 billion. You got one across the finish line, an antiviral. Is that being used in the United States? Uh, it, very little. It, it has emergency use authorization. It never got to full approval, and so we're actually seeing it being used much more outside the United States. So in actuality, you spent $2.5 billion and got none uh, of significant market share in the United States despite that. Uh, Mr. Wado, I'll talk to you for a second. Um, in my 25 years taking care of patients, we were always able to find a solution for their drugs that they needed. 340B programs, um, rebates, 
Um, there's always exceptions to the rules, but what type of efforts does John, J and J make to work with 340B programs and to help help some of these people that need help? Thank you, sir. We we, we care deeply about patient affordability, but also we care about the sustainability of the uh, rural hospitals and the small hospitals that take care of patients that uh, are underserved. So we believe that the 340B program, uh, it's an important program to support those hospitals and we are fully, uh, fully looking forward to collaborate with them uh, in any way we can to support patient access on those hospitals. And I'm going to point out once again, it's just not rural hospitals, it's our community health centers are taking great advantage of the 340B program as well, trying to make sure that every patient in America has access to primary care, true affordable access to primary care, plus having access to affordable drugs as, as well. Um, I might make a couple quick points. The people of Kansas sent me here to save Medicare. To save Medicare, I need a miracle drug to treat Alzheimer's. It seems to me that Americans bear the burden of most of the R&D in this world and other countries benefit from it. And that impacts the price in, in many ways as well. Mr. Davis, am I wrong? Does, why does it feel like to me that Americans are peeling most of the brunt of the R&D cost? Or is that not accurate? I don't know. Well, I think, Senator, it gets down to, as you look across the, the globe, um, different markets, and, and I appreciate what the U.S. does. I think the U.S. favors innovation. It values it. It values access for our patients, fast access, most access. Many markets around the world um, don't do that. What they focus on more is their budget and how do they meet, meet those budget needs, and we appreciate the budgetary constraints that everyone faces, but as a result of that, Often patients aren't getting access to meds. They don't get them as fast, which we've commented on today. And it's harder to see how you can support the innovation we need to do in Thank that you. situation. Thank you. Senator Baldwin. 